Hi everyone, joining us we have District Fire Chief for the County of Grand Prairie, one of our District Fire Chiefs, Matt Smith, along with Rick Arthur, a Wildfire Behavior Specialist. Thank you so much for everything that you've done, A number one, protecting the homes in the county and the people. Uh, what do you want to relay to residents though? Your specific, what do you want to tell them? What we'd really like to do is reiterate the importance for residents to stay out of the area. Uh, we still have active fire in some of the areas and we have crews working everywhere to get things under control and mopped up. Uh, most importantly, we have equipment, we have hoses, and we have structure protection systems set up. Uh, we have to be very cautious of the equipment we have set up. Uh, you can't be driving over hoses. We have sprinklers set up on houses. If you start tampering with that and unhooking stuff, it's not only going to affect your structure, but it's going to affect our whole water supply and other structures that we have in the loop. So we just need to reiterate the importance of, of if you see something there, leave it alone. Uh, we fire smarted a lot of properties, meaning we took combustibles away from your house. Please don't put them back on your decks. Don't put them back on your house. Um, feel free to reach out to somebody with GPREP and they will be more than happy to give you some information on it. But it's a very dynamic situation. Things can change fast. And when it does, your visibility, your awareness a lot of things can change in a real hurry as well as our firefighters are going to be responding into that area and if you're there to congest it you're just going to slow it down and make us less effective thanks Matt and what about is there any risk to yourself are you are you threatened your life if someone comes back in 100% um, we have a lot of different components with our job uh, when it comes to the apparatus, the hose, the water. That's our life safety. We have overhead hazards. We have helicopters and planes working in the area. And if, if you come in and you could jeopardize that, whether it's you take away our safety line with our water supply, you block our emergency exit with your vehicle, or you get in the way of us trying to get in there, it's making the situation worse for us and ultimately for the situation as a whole. So Rick, can you just give us a little bit of insight into this fire itself? Certainly, uh, I think I think everybody's got to understand that that this fire season, is, this particular fire season, this spring is is exceptionally hot and dry. And it started not this year, but last fall when we had a very dry fall, relatively low snow or close to normal snowfall, and and a lot of that was was lost during the winter uh, through the warming periods. And by the end of March, early early April, most of that snow is gone. And what it leaves behind is, is the successive layers of very dry fuel. There's heavy slash, very heavy slash in some of these stands. They haven't burned for a long time. There's lots of deadfall. It's all elevated. And that's all been drying for over a month now. Underneath that is a very heavy, heavy layer of, of, of grass and, and matted grass fine fuels and, and dry fine fuels like that, I refer to that as grassoline. It's extremely explosive. You add higher temperatures like we had last week, lower humidities and, and strong winds and it creates for a very, very dangerous fire situation. Uh, there were some homes lost, absolutely, but on the other hand there were many, many homes saved. And there's no loss of life that I'm aware of as of yet. But having people come back into the, into the fire area while active operations are ongoing. It's extremely dangerous, not only for their families, but also for the first responders who are trying to extinguish this fire and make it safe for the rest of the community. Uh, currently, the fire looks relatively quiet because most of it's smoldering. There's large areas that are very hot and, and, and deep organics. And with the shift in weather that's coming, uh, hotter temperatures, lower RHs, uh, possibly some winds with it. The potential for this fire to blow up and put people at risk is there again. So what we want to do is, is work safely and securely, extinguish that, give the firefighters a few more days to, to, to mop it up and make it secure for the community. And so it's safe for residents and their families. Uh, you don't want to move back in and, and then have to evacuate at the same time people are trying to respond for fires. It's, it's dangerous for everybody at that point. So can you just uh, tell me a little bit about the importance of fire smarting, especially in this wooded area? So fire smart is a, is a made in Canada, actually a made in Alberta program. It was developed here in Alberta by Partners in Protection. And it's focused at reducing the risk of wildfire to homes and communities. And it begins at home. So for homeowners, especially those living on acreages and in a forested area, 
you have to remove the fuels around your house. Keep it, uh, keep your grass mowed, uh, keep the, the flammable fuels back away from your house. Don't be afraid of cutting trees and, and removing the debris. Clean up underneath the stands, open them up, thin them out. Uh, clean up underneath your decks, uh, have a look at your eave troughs. You have to learn to think like fire. Uh, the, that same wind that takes a, a that blows up and is a zephyr wind that settles and settles leaves under your deck or, or beside your house, uh, in amongst your wood pile, is the same zephyr wind that's going to draw burning embers into the exact same spot. Those leaves, those embers, uh, they mix, they'll catch fire, and they burn your house. So it's a lot of the lot of the homes that were saved. Uh, some of them were fire smarted, made it real easy for for first responders to extinguish the fires close to safely and with no losses. And there were other homes that that literally fires were moving under decks or right beside the houses when, when the firefighters got there. They saved those houses. Uh, and part of it would have been a lot easier if homeowners had done their job. So if you're not in an evacuated area and you live in a rural area with, with an acreage, you should be doing fire smart. This is just the beginning of the fire season. It's, it's very early in the season. Uh, we're already going into the second stage where temperatures are really starting to increase as of next week and, and the relative humidity is going to go way down. The amount of dry fuel that's out there uh, is, is exceptional and, and becoming very, very dangerous. It's not just the fires that are immediately concerning us right now, the ones that we have, the ones that are to come and resources are tapped out now. So, help the firefighters keep out of their way, uh, help them to put these fires out and be ready for the next fires which are coming. And that's really great advice, especially you can find all the information on fire smarting on the county's website. As well, please be vigilant. If you are in the evacuation order area, stay out to protect your family and gentlemen like these, our personnel as well for their lives and yours. For all the updates, stay up to date on gprep.ca, county's website, countygp.ab.ca, our social media channels, as well as the city's social media channels. Thanks, everyone.